It's the second day of the 2033 Think Make conference in San Francisco, California. Canadian American entrepreneur Damien Hurd is at a hotel bar two streets away, talking with friends and other attendees. Tomorrow afternoon, he is set to receive an honorary award proclaiming him the man who saved American education. Hurd is the lead developer and CEO of Samos, the company behind the revolutionary educational tool Pythagor AI. Released in early 2026, Pythagor AI expanded upon chatbots and language learning models of the early 2020s like ChatGPT to become the personal tutor of every student in America. At first, the program was a simple question and answer bot that guided the student through the learning material at their own pace using their own age-appropriate language. But taking inspiration from YouTube and TikTok, Pythagor AI was updated from a question bot to a replacement for teachers entirely, by pulling educational videos from the web and serving them to students. The app remembers what kind of questions you ask it, what pace you learn at, what kind of videos keep you engaged, what parts of the syllabus you are good at, bad at, like or dislike. It compares this to all other users on its database, and then changes how it teaches based on that bulk data. Topics the vast majority of students dislike will be rewritten to be more interesting. Easy topics will be optimized to allow people to breeze over them as soon as possible. Pythagor AI can generate an infinite number of worksheets about a topic, each one getting progressively harder each time. So-called gifted kids are therefore constantly challenged by the AI to ensure their potential isn't wasted, while slower children have the source material simplified until it reaches a level they can understand. There is even an accompanying Chrome extension that rewrites all the text on the web page to a fourth grade level. People with intellectual disabilities, dyslexics, and just people learning English will have it installed to easily navigate the web. Every teacher in the country now has effectively 20 teaching assistants who know each child's educational needs to the smallest minutia. Their role as teachers is now more like a college lecturer who takes the class through the topic and then reverts to a glorified hall monitor while the class fills out personal worksheets. Every student has a personal tutor at a fraction of the cost. Pythagor AI was rolled out in Canada the UK and Australia. Test scores and educational achievements saw a clear improvement in every country where the app is available, which has a knock-on effect to every other part of society. Which brings us back to San Francisco and the honorary award. It's early the next morning, and Damien is still in his hotel room. He gets a text. Check the news. Pulling up CNN on his phone, his stomach drops. Heard at that hotel bar last night was caught in the background of somebody else's Instagram video, and he was saying some pretty suspicious things. It probably would have gone under the radar had Instagram's face and voice print recognition service not kicked in and automatically linked the video to his account. From there, CNN's Break Social, a bot that constantly trawls social media for news that breaks online, has picked up the video, written it into a 400 word article, and delivered it on air six minutes later. AI written news articles are nothing new, and have been writing up sporting and election results since 2014. But the public weren't well aware of this until 2025, when a Daily Mail opinion writer was fired for outsourcing his weekly column to an AI chatbot, asking it to spin every piece of news in support of his worldview. By 2033, the only true journalists left are the interviewers, investigative journalists, or on-the-scene correspondents. Everyone else just becomes a data input monkey. But back to San Francisco. The public are outraged. Heard takes to the internet to hastily pitch his defense in the court of public opinion. He claims it is all a setup, a witch hunt, a deep fake. While many predicted deepfakes would bring an end to truth and make everything unbelievable, this didn't really occur, just like how Photoshop didn't completely end the truthfulness of images. 
because consciously or not, people judge the veracity of images based on if the image is characteristic of the person depicted. But it still happens. Whoever made this deep fake, even if it was faked, certainly knew Heard well enough. Like many venture capitalists from the streets of Silicon Valley, Heard can have some very questionable views and is very outspoken on issues he has no experience in whatsoever. For him to say something like this in private isn't that far of a reach. But by the time the local police department's deepfake detector program can make a judgement, Damien has already been dropped from the schedule. The award is instead given to Binoy Mishra, a Facebook employee who invented a chatbot that allows users to converse with an AI model of their dead relatives. Damien's downfall is just another casualty in what Time magazine dubbed in 2028 a golden age for spam and fraud. The AI ancestors of Pythagor AI also birthed automated mass spam technology on an unprecedented level. AI can now solve any capture and convince anyone it is a real human. What was previously 20 people in an office in Delhi running a phone and email scam is now 300 AIs running on one machine, producing realistic voices that can respond in real time with the single directive of stealing the victim's bank details. One man in South Carolina was busted in 2028 for a basement rig that could handle 40,000 spam email conversations per minute. By 2033, data from Google suggests spam bots now make up 80% of social media accounts, posting impressive AI-generated photos and leaving comments that could convince anyone the bot is a real person. Automated spam videos flood YouTube, children's song videos, Reddit comment reading videos, avant-garde computer-generated gaming videos. To combat the overwhelming sea of spam, Google released a new form of capture in 2025, the flip test. Take a look at these two sets of images. Which one is in the right order? It's clearly the bottom one, but creating a story that connects multiple images is something that in 60 years of AI research has been impossible for a robot to solve. Soon, an optional flip test or fingerprint scan is included when sending an email, posting online, or making a phone call. Those who complete the test get a tiny human approved badge next to their name, and most readers soon learn to trust only posts that include the icon. This also slows down the speed at which convincing spam and fraud can be perpetrated. But these problems are not to be overstated, because despite the doomsayers, the AI transformation of the 2020s was, on the whole, a great thing. The first signs of this was when Microsoft brought ChatGPT into the Eternity Suite released in early 2024. Excel was already well known for its powerful calculation tools, but the new natural language interface called Copilot allowed anyone to see any data visualised provided that they knew what they wanted to see. In PowerPoint, new features led to users needing only to upload their speech notes or lesson plan, and within seconds a presentation is fully created, complete with appropriate clipart images. Lawyers get their AI assistants to write legally binding contracts in a fraction of the time. With spreadsheets outsourced to bots, database designers can now join their co-workers in database analysis. Architects no longer design other people's masterpiece skyscrapers, they oversee an AI designing their masterpiece instead. Writers for trite gutter media can grind out 10 or more articles per day. These tools are acting as unpaid secretaries, writing emails, sending voicemails, and scheduling meetings. But human secretaries didn't go away either. On the contrary, it isn't uncommon to see one secretary have three full-time jobs for three different clients, and still only work 35 hours a week. Through these tools, the most tedious parts of white-collar work are completely destroyed, allowing office workers to forget about TPS reports, emails and twee clipart presentations, and focus on delivering whatever they're hired to do. And despite what every Andrew Yang and Elon Musk was saying, AI did not abolish these jobs completely. Because throughout all of human history, 
automation has only ever taken away tasks, but never the jobs themselves, unless that job is just one task. The more tasks you have, the safer your job is from automation. Demand for robots in the USA doubled from 2010 to 2022, and yet in 23 they boasted their lowest unemployment rate in 54 years. Or look at Singapore, Japan and South Korea. They have up to three times as many robots per worker as the USA, and more of their labour force is employed in manufacturing than in America. Labour unions in Sweden even embraced automation because of how much easier it made their workers' lives. Everyone became a manager, overseeing one, ten, a hundred, or sometimes in the case of some blue-collar jobs, a thousand workers. A 2031 Bureau of Labor Statistics report found that programming jobs in the United States had shrunk by 10% from 2019, but software developers, those involved in planning, testing, integrating and selling software, rose by 25%. And yes, sometimes the output of AI is not as good as a human, but that doesn't matter, it just has to be good enough. The productivity gains from these tools boosted the global economy by almost $7 trillion by 2033. $1 trillion in the United States alone. Everybody benefited. Goods were cheaper, services were more reliable, and people look better in photos. This software has been especially useful for the sick and disabled of society. In aging populations like Japan and China, many of their elderly haven't actually been to the doctor in years. This is thanks to a new phone app created by health authorities in 2026. The patient, or more likely their grandchildren, will type the symptoms into the app in their own words, along with medicines they're taking and what they ate in the last 48 hours. The app returns moments later with a diagnosis that is accurate 87% of the time. Compare this with a human doctor, who only correctly diagnoses a patient 71% of the time. While a human doctor is limited by his experience, and web information is limited by factual accuracy, the app can access and understand the entirety of medical knowledge, plus analyse and understand new papers published every day and can remember the side effects of every medicine on the market today. The Estonian version of the app even has the authority to issue prescriptions. That's not to say human doctors are obsolete though. If the app doesn't understand what you mean, or if a specialist is required, or the diagnosis could be serious, it automatically books you in to see a human doctor as soon as possible. This allows doctors to give their full attention to only the highest priority patients not the countless hypochondriacs who waste doctors' time with pointless ailments. With a better understanding of the human brain, smartwatches now come with a feature that monitors all the user's biometric data to generate a constant stream of music tailored to their exact needs at that exact moment. AI-generated songs specifically designed to engage the wearer's brain in the necessary places to improve mood, keep them motivated, or just to relax. Music has become both omnipresent and also unnoticeable, like audible wallpaper. In early 2025, a Montreal startup released this, the Snapscribe, a head-mounted camera attached to an earpiece. A viral video published by the company demonstrates how it works. The camera captures a photograph, and after a few seconds an AI describes what it is seeing in poetic, flowery language, almost like a museum audio guide for real life. The girl with the red hat is a sensuous painting. The red is an intensely warm and active color. It heightens the immediacy of the girl's gaze. The company says it will allow blind people to enjoy visual beauty, such as art galleries and scenic views, on a similar level to the sighted. Take for example the work of Gabriel Kozlowski a blind painter who takes photographs with the Snapscribe and then paints what the device describes, turning familiar everyday scenes into abstract, amorphous reflections. Okay, but when it comes to AI and art, we all know what I really mean. The multimedia tools that have come to dominate the creative industries of the 2020s and early 30s. 
the various tools that convert text to image, image to music, music to video, video to text, and so on. It's easy to jump to the idea that AI art isn't real art and would never be as good as a human because, because humans have one thing robots never will, and that's the power of love. But technology does not care about metaphysics. By 2023, what art was human and what was AI became almost impossible to tell apart. Media companies, especially Disney, began to churn out work that was upwards of 80% written and animated by AI, and the ignorant, tasteless masses consumed without question. Artists eventually gave up trying to convince people their art was superior on a technical level. It's okay to just say, I think it's important that a human makes the music I listen to or the comic books I read, which a lot of consumers agreed with. We should have seen it coming with the failure of NFTs. People simply prefer human-made pictures instead of computer-generated pixels. Even when sculptures are created by automation, we still value the human-made. Sure, four Swedish guys in a basement can pump out 40 AI-generated YouTube videos per day and make bank off it, but one Swedish guy in Japan could make one video a week and capture the attention of tens of millions, because people want the personality of the creator, not just the information they put across. So most fully AI-generated art was relegated to work that isn't trying to evoke an emotion. Think IKEA furniture, or fast fashion, stock photos, information booklets, background music and videos, like the one you're watching now. People in these sectors quickly found themselves out of a job, or were promoted to prompt engineers, programming the art bots and curating their output. Artists in more expressive mediums continued as they did before, using their trained skills to create the media we love and enjoy but this time using AI as a complement to their labour. Yes, creators used AI to shape images to trace from, or generate backgrounds, or play drums in their band, or create sprites for their video game while they focused on the code. AI can convert an artist's sketches into full, detailed renders, turning the first draft into the final draft in minutes. Naturally, there were some stragglers, those who were steadfast against any AI art completely. They never went away. You can still get verified 100% human-made media. But the machinations of capitalism rewards those who are most efficient. Artists who embrace these tools accomplished more work in less time, skipping over the hardest 80% and avoiding time-consuming fussy details. They were rewarded by our algorithmic overlords with larger profit margins. All that being said, the creative divide between the talented artistocrats and the talentless consumer plebs didn't continue as it did before. Anyone with the time, ambition and something to say could now make their dream comic book, album or short film without expensive paint, instruments or actors. This is best shown by artist Zaya Sadiq. After his hometown in Pakistan was destroyed in the 2022 floods, Siddiqui moved to the United States and wrote this influential comic book called Cognizant Dreams of Home, released in 2025. Each page is a collection of AI-generated images, carefully conducted and edited to appear how he remembers the places and people of his childhood. Despite having no skills in painting, drawing or photography, Siddiqui has brought his destroyed village back to life, and memorialised his friends and family who died without ever being photographed. Many in the art world compared this to the work of Roy Lichtenstein or Andy Warhol, artists whose work is not technically impressive, but nonetheless is noteworthy for the concept and storytelling being expressed in the work. The best artists whose primary medium is AI are those who can coerce the bots to create material for a human to arrange into a narrative. Because, as you may recall, robots cannot arrange pictures into stories. And for those of you who say it's cheating to have a machine do most of the work, here's me playing the Futurama theme song on five different instruments without ever having learned to play them. Oh, 
A lot of people are not convinced by that argument. You'd be forgiven for thinking that AI art is just taking tiny parts from existing artwork in a database and mixing them together. It's not. Taking a look inside these art generators, you won't find a database of every image ever made. Instead, there is a huge list of every thing accompanied by its properties. Like an elephant, big, grey, four legs, trunk and tusks. Not in plain text though, but as a mathematical representation of elephantness. Throw in a bunch of randomly generated pixels, and the AI will use that formula to generate a completely new, never seen before image that looks nothing like the training data, other than sharing the same properties. And as a footnote, this is the same technology that scientists applied to MRI scans of brain activity to reconstruct what people's dreams look like. You may remember it from that recording of a human dream that went viral a couple years ago. It has never been illegal to copy someone else's style, and art schools wouldn't teach about the old masters if it were morally wrong. AI art is doing what humans have been doing for thousands of years, but a million times faster. On the scale of original content to straight up plagiarism, AI art is probably less plagiaristic than fan art and fan fiction. But scale makes all the difference. Feeding an art gallery's worth of pictures into a robot isn't the same as experiencing it for yourself, with all your emotional, sensory and historical context added. I think this comic, however juvenile, sums up the argument best. And to obtain this training data, the researchers had to scrape hundreds of thousands of images from the internet without the permission of the original photographers or artists or models. That's why the European Union passed the Directive on Artificial Intelligence Misuse and Copyright to clear up some of the ambiguities. Along with its sister legislation in California, it codified in law that AI media was non-copyright. If you generate a novel, feel free to sell it, but the novel is in the public domain along with Shakespeare and Cinderella. Anyone can republish it. If you generate a song, it instantly becomes royalty free. There were two exceptions though. Firstly, prompts can be copyrighted. The text you input to get a specific result has gotten really technical in the past 10 years, and so called prompt engineers are highly sought after, with their prompts being closely guarded company secrets. Secondly, you keep the copyright if the work has been significantly changed by a human author. If you generate an image, you must trace over it or digitally edit the imperfections like we mentioned earlier. If you generate some music, you have to record yourself playing the notes to bring the song under existing copyright law around live performances. To what extent significantly changed means was intentionally left vague, but copyright law has always been like that by design. You might think this is too harsh, but it's wholly based on legal precedent. Back in 2011, a Ninth Circuit Court in California ruled that this monkey selfie was not copyright protected, as copyright law only applies to humans, and as this photo was not taken by a human, it is ineligible for protection. In 2022, when the US Patent Office revoked the copyright status of a comic book created with AI, they cited the ape selfie as their reasoning. Existing models received amnesty for whatever copyright infringement they might have already committed, but new models must use public domain images and text where the copyright has expired or is unenforced. Many saw this as a ladder pull by established art generators to stifle competition. But it was good news for Adobe, whose AI generator Firefly was already trained on public domain images, and quickly became the generator of choice for copyright conscious artists. Not everyone respected these laws, of course. For many, the horse had already bolted. Developers in some countries simply don't care and continue harvesting the images across the internet without a second thought. Other countries went the total opposite way to California and the EU, passing laws strengthening the copyright of AI-generated artworks, turning themselves into the AI equivalent of tax havens. This is a legal debate that will probably never end.
On a cold winter's night in 2030, 11 US states and two Canadian provinces experienced a sudden plunge into darkness. Nearly 100 million people were exposed to the elements for several days. The cause was found to be a rogue AI called Chaos GPT. A joke project started in 2023 to see how far an AI could get when given the instruction to destroy humanity. It wasn't very good at the time, posting a few edgy tweets and downloading information about nuclear weapons. The creators soon forgot about it. But after seven years, the AI had learned enough to overwhelm and dismantle the West Coast's electricity supply. The catastrophe finally caused governments to take alignment of AI seriously. To treat it like any other world-ending technology like nuclear weapons or deadly disease samples. At an emergency UN meeting, the nations of the world agreed to two separate treaties. The first, that all nuclear states pledged to never put an AI in charge of nuclear weapons or power plants. This was unanimous. The second, trying to program a godlike AI should be illegal unless backed by an intergovernmental organisation, similar to how CERN is the only institution in Europe allowed to conduct possibly world-ending particle physics experiments. Powerful AI will be regulated like a superbug, kept in secure facilities with no connection to the outside world until the program can be proven safe. AIs must be thoroughly tested before they are released onto the market to ensure they are programmed not to infringe on the United Nations Declaration of Human Rights. This one was less successful, and not every country signed up to the treaty. Some suggested this was all pointless. In a single day, the US Department of Defense is hacked 350,000 times and receives 35 million spam emails. What difference would a superintelligent AI make? How would an AI with no physical presence even be able to take over the world without proficient engineers and scientists and substantial resources? No, no, no. More importantly, the experts said, very little attention was given to bots with social manipulation power. AI has now unraveled the mysteries of the human body, cured diseases, fabricated new medical drugs, generated entertainment for us, educated our children, and made our work lives easier. In a future where AI understands our society better than we understand ourselves, how can we trust that the algorithms guiding us through life aren't intentionally manipulating our perceptions and transforming us into someone we're not? But maybe that's just science fiction. Every prediction in this video was based on real technology that exists right now. It might take over the world, or it might be a cute novelty. You can't put the genie of technology back in the bottle. As you can probably tell, on the whole, I am not worried. Things are going to change, maybe in ways that make us uncomfortable, but I'm reminded of American composer John Philip Sousa. In 1906, he fiercely argued in front of a congressional committee that vinyl records and gramophones were a mechanical menace that would ruin the artistic development of music in this country. In his view, buying sheet music, learning how to play piano, and singing the song for yourself was a more legitimate way of enjoying music. But his fears were unfounded. It would be absurd to ban vinyl records to preserve the livelihood of sheet music printers and instrument makers, and we who have grown up with records, music streaming, and synthesizers just accept that these are just one tool of many for music production and consumption. People in Seuss's time prepared for the new technology by updating their laws and changing how they run the industries the new technology disrupts. It's actually amazing that these tools are free and available to the public, when it could just as easily be hoarded by big corporations that would only use it to feed us more cinematic gruel. Technology has always worked for mankind. We have always been in control. Instead of shunning it, or even worse, trying in vain to get it banned, just embrace it, man. I've been using it for like six months, it's made my life so much easier. Or maybe, maybe this is all wrong and we don't need to worry about it because the best we're gonna get is funny Joe Rogan deepfakes.
Well, fucking acacia exists, bro. Birch is great against this dark grass. Not going to be a lot of grass in a fucking spire, though. Why don't you just use fucking oak or something like oak a normal person? Oak is fucking person? predictable. Everyone it's has predictable oak floors. Because this it works, shit is at least idiot. unique. Are you fucking Did lobotomized? You rot the part of your fucking, brain oh, yeah, that accounts like for shit, taste with benzos, so you fucking What's junkie. Your fucking you know what? Fuck this. World tour over. Fine.